So last week, the 9850X 3D announcement went live and you might be wondering what performance benefit this particular CPU has over the already uh, S tier 9800X 3D. So let's see if we can figure that out. Welcome to Machines and More. Here on this channel, I cover a variety of PC building topics. Uh, today, we'll do a quick talk about a CPU that was just announced by AMD and isn't yet available. So from the pre-CS briefing that AMD had with media, I asked them if uh, 9850X3D is basically a bin 9800X3D to which they said, yeah. So if you're not familiar with binning, it's where the chip manufacturer separates out the better silicon from the not as good ones. And that allows for them to create additional product SKUs and price points for what otherwise would be the same CPU. Now there's gonna be some additional optimizations for the 9850X really running at that higher clock speed. But for all intents and purposes, we can treat the 9850X really as a 9800X really running with a spec boost of 5.6 gigahertz. So a 400 megahertz bump over the current best gaming CPU in the world. So the actual boost behavior and how that plays out thermally, that'll remain to be seen. But for the purpose of keeping it simple, let's just assume that it'll hit 5.6 on all cores. Okay, so I took my 9800X 3D and overclocked it. Uh, from this, we can derive some early estimations. A full disclosure, I don't have a 9850X 3D on hand and I haven't seen or tested one yet. So this isn't some sneaky way to leak non-public information ahead of time. It's just some math and overclocking with the information that we have already. So first I wanted to see how the multi-threaded performance would react with each 100 megahertz interval. And I couldn't get my 9800X3D really all the way to 5.6 gigahertz on all cores for this test here. But if we look at how the performance scales for Blender here, from 5.1 to 5.5, there's about a 7.1% or so reduction in the render time. And uh, that may not be so terrible actually, if that's you know 9850X3D really versus 9800X3D, really, depending on the price of this lands at. This isn't exactly targeted, at productivity users, but if you have a workflow that is single core heavy, one thing that I thought of is that the high clock speed could be an interesting asset here. Let's take a look at gaming, which is, you know, where this is uh, gonna be targeted at. And there's gonna be games that are more sensitive to the CPU performance and some that are less. Uh, we call those more GPU limited titles. But here, let's look at two titles that are sensitive. Uh, look at the moderate one first. Paired with a 5080, I've dialed Cyberpunk 2077 down to 1080 high just to get it to be a little bit more sensitive. These are all limited short tests, so I'm not gonna pay too much attention to the lows. Uh, they're gonna vary quite a bit here. But from 5.2 to 5.6, the averages go from 238 all the way to 249.5, and that's a 4.8% jump. From 5.1 to 5.5 is 4.2%, so I think we can safely guess in that range. Now, Far Cry 6 tends to be more sensitive, very much so even at 1440 high. 5.2 to 5.6, here we have a 4.8% bump. From 5.1 to 5.5, we're seeing a 7% jump, so I'd probably expect to see somewhere around 5%, generally speaking, for games that are CPU sensitive and 7% uh, or so for heavy multi-threaded workloads. And uh, we'll have to see what the price gap is like. Either way, that 9800X3D really will continue to be an incredible gaming CPU though. So yeah, just a quick back of the envelope test here. Stay tuned here, uh, like, make sure you are subscribed to get all the updates and big thanks for watching.